When I was a kid, I was fascinated by my mother's poison ring. It had a wide silver band with a bright red stone. It wasn't an overly expensive ring, just something that she picked up for a few dollars at some thrift store or another. If you weren't paying close attention, it looked completely normal. That's why I was so surprised when she showed it to me one day, lifting the stone to reveal a hidden compartment underneath it. It's called a poison ring because that's what people used to put in it. They started off as locket rings and people would place pictures of their loved ones inside. Soon enough, however, they realized that they could just as easily use it to store poison and take care of their enemies surreptitiously. Her eyes sparkled as she took in my blatant fascination. Would you like to try it on? That ring was always too big for my spindly fingers, but I liked it so much that my mother put it on a cheap silver chain so I could wear it to school. For months, I wore that ring religiously, showing it to all my friends a hundred times over. Eventually, my mom let me keep it for myself, finding my obsession endearing. I don't think the ring held as much fascination for anyone else that it did for me. I found that I liked it, the way it held a secret so simple and yet so ingenious. And I've always liked secrets. My mom married my stepdad when I was 13. I got an older sister, Tanya, who was 14 at the time. I was happy with the marriage. My biological father had run out on my mom before I was born, so I'd never really had a dad. Todd, that's my stepdad, was the only boyfriend my mom ever brought home to meet me. He was nice and surprised me with presents from time to time. He even convinced my mom to let me get my ears pierced. He was okay in my book. I liked Tanya even better. She was earthy and open, into all the hippie shit I see spread around on Facebook. Nowadays it makes me cringe, but at the time I thought it was really cool. World peace and free love, boho fashion and long hair that cascaded down her back in blue waves. For a while, I wanted blue hair too, just seeing how cool it looked on her. Tanya and I got along right away. She was interesting, more so than anyone else I knew at school. I could listen to her talk for hours about the Tao and yin-yang and nirvana and what have you. Even better, she actually listened to me. I mean, it wasn't often that I had something to say, but when I did, I always had her undivided attention. One night a few weeks before the wedding, Tanya and I were having a girl's night, staying up late in my room, eating ice cream and watching stupid reality TV. I liked watching reality shows because Tanya would go on and on about the commercialization and materialism of modern society, and the way that she said those words made me shiver a little. Tanya sat up abruptly during a commercial break and asked me, Hyacinth, what's your secret? I looked at her. Confusion stitched over me with a thread of fear. For a moment, I was convinced that I'd been found out before she continued, Everyone has one. One special secret that they've never told anyone else. Since we're going to be sisters soon, let's tell each other our secrets. I nodded in agreement, simply because I wanted to hear her speak more. She said, Before my mom killed herself, she was a terrible drunk. My secret is that she used to beat me when my father wasn't home. Even today he doesn't know about it. You're the only other person in the world who does. I didn't know that her mother had killed herself, or that she'd been an alcoholic. Todd had never mentioned it either. I wondered if my mother knew. I also wondered who Tanya would have been if her home life had always been happy. Would she have been different than the girl I knew now? It sounds awful, but at that moment, I was fervently grateful for every bruise she'd suffered. Your turn, she prompted when I made no move to speak. I thought for a moment trying to think of something to say, something other than what was on my mind. I opened my mouth, not sure what was going to come out. When I was eight, our family dog died while my mom was at work one afternoon. I thought she'd be sad, so I buried him in the backyard and told her he ran away. His name was Lucky. Tanya nodded solemnly, 
as though we'd completed a ritual that would bind us together forever. What I told her was true, but it wasn't my all-important secret. No, that secret I couldn't share yet, but it was bubbling closer under the surface of my skin with every day we spent together. Sometimes, I worried that she'd see it swimming in my eyes, but she never did. Should I be thankful for that? Two years passed, and Tanya and I became closer every day. It really made our parents happy to see us bonding so well. We could always be seen together at school, which meant that when people wanted to talk to Tanya, they approached me too. This became somewhat irritating when Tanya became popular amongst the boys. It seemed like every day a new guy would ask her out. Some of them didn't even go to our school. They came from neighboring schools during our lunch period just to see her. All these guys cared about how beautiful she was, but none of them ever took the time to listen to her talk. Maybe that's why she rejected all of them. I remember one day when we were walking home from school, she'd handed me a Snickers bar some boy had given her at lunch. She was allergic to peanuts and couldn't eat it, and I had hidden it in my pocket so I could throw it away when I got home. I loved Snickers, but I wouldn't eat that bar if it was the last speck of food on earth. As we walked, she said, I have never once thought a boy could fall in love with me. They just fall in love with my skin, all those dead cells they see on the outside. I wonder what it would be like to be loved for what's on the inside. I love you for what's inside, I supplied, and she smiled at me. <laughs> Maybe you and I should just stick together forever, grow up and get a house all on our own where nobody can bother us. The thought made me so happy that I tucked it away in my heart to look at on rainy days. Another year passed, and things stayed the same but for one major change. Tanya got a boyfriend. It was Snicker's guy, much to my distaste. Although she still spent a lot of time with me, I noticed her spending more and more time with him. Josh was his name, I think. He had greasy blonde hair, and his teeth were crooked. I wonder if he ever got braces. Tanya went from liking him to crushing on him, to loving him. She started dreaming about weddings and marriage. I tried to keep my disapproval to myself. Tanya was happy, and I liked it when she was happy. It's just that I'd rather she be happy with me and me alone. One night, she came home a little late from her date and bounced up to my room. I could tell something was different about her. She had clouds in her eyes and a stunning smile spilling across her face. I have another secret for you, but you have to promise not to tell. I waited, surprised by the shock of dread that tore through me. It was as though I knew what she was going to say before she said it. She sat on my bed and gave me a conspiratorial look. Josh and I just, you know, went all the way for the first time. Her eyes sparkled, and she was blind to the way my face froze as I heard the news. So she'd given her first time to Josh. <sighs> I think we'll be together forever, she said in a dreamy tone of voice. I gave some non-committal response as she skipped out of my room, leaving me to nurse the shards of my heart that she'd just broken. Somehow, she didn't know. A few nights later, our family stopped being a family. We were eating supper, spaghetti, I remember, because it makes me sick every time I try to eat it now. When Tanya's face began to turn an ashen gray, she started to choke, clawing at the swelling in her throat. My mom screamed, and my stepdad scrambled to search Tanya's pocket for her EpiPen. Unfortunately, she wasn't in the habit of keeping it on her, and a frantic search of her room turned up nothing. My parents rushed her to the hospital, and I held her hand the whole way, watching as her eyes lit up with a red haze, and then slowly began to slip shut. She'd had a severe allergic reaction, and we were too late. The doctors did everything they could, they assured us. I watched my stepfather crumble as he lost the remaining member of his original family. 
and his brokenness left my mother and me in pieces. Things changed after that. Our family didn't feel whole without Tanya. Todd and my mom stayed together, leaning on each other as tragedy ravaged all of us. We managed to successfully sue the noodle company that the spaghetti had come from after my mother realized it was the only way traces of peanuts could have found their way into Tanya's plate. Life was hard for my parents, but it was hell for me. I'd lost the one person in the world I knew to be my soulmate. Yes, I loved her. She was never a sister to me, do you see? She was always something more. I don't know how Josh reacted. I didn't care to see him again. I find myself thinking back to the night Tanya died all those years ago. I wonder if she'd blame me. I don't think she would. Tanya understood me better than anyone, although she failed to understand the one thing that mattered, how much I loved her. She'd loved me, too, but not the way I needed her to. I can still feel my mother's poison ring sliding around my fingers, the ghostly sensation harking back to that night when I washed the rest of the peanut dust out of its secret compartment, pouring all traces of my crime down the drain. Poor Tanya. I really did love her, you know. <laughs>